revealed himself. They knew they sold him into slavery. They uh, know he has every right to put him in jail, but he tells them, don't, don't you worry one bit. In Genesis 50, he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And then goes on to say the blessings that have been accounted to for this very situation that Joseph was put in. And now he's second in all of Egypt to help his people and all the people in Egypt. We don't know where this turmoil is going. We, we know it's strange. Uh, it may get worse, it may get better. We may or may not be all together in the sanctuary for Easter. But in any case, uh, fear should not penetrate our hearts. One of the uh, essays I saw today had nothing to do with Christianity. It ended with, yes, but know that at least we're in a nation that is full of freedom and full of liberty. And I thought at the moment, boy, if they only knew the writer of this particular one. We have a particular freedom in Christ, freedom from sin. Boy, and freedom from the judgment thereof, God has been so perfectly merciful to us. And liberty beyond all measure, because God has carefully given us the Holy Spirit to nudge us here, to lead us there. We have liberty to follow the spiritual nudgings that come directly from God. So put pleasure in your heart for what God has done for us. And remember, even though the whole world might mean all this for evil, God mean, means it for good. Always three or more steps in front of, ahead of Satan. Take note that God is your God. Now, may we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful graciousness to all of us. You've given us things in times of plenty, and now you give us things in times of need. We thank you for this perfect love gift you've given us through your son and through him, our salvation. Help us to come closer to you often with an open heart so that you may fill us with your special love, your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Woody. Appreciate that. Uh, hey, Paul, uh, can you, uh, are, are you ready to do the communion meditation? I'm ready, sunshine. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, did I unmute yet? No. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Okay. I'm just not seeing myself on the screen, but that's okay. Um, hey, as we uh, get out of here together again, um, it's, uh, I've had, I'm sure like uh, everybody else, I've had a lot of very uh, interesting thoughts, uh, prayer time, had a lot of alone time, as, as have we all. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, how even uh, introverts, um, as much as they crave their alone time, still need uh, some kind of social interaction. And, and it's just been such a, you know, even whenever I go out and, and spend time out in my shop working, what have you, I come back in the house every so often just so I can see Linda and hear her voice and get a little bit of that social interaction. Um, and uh, we've all seen a lot of jokes floating around. Uh, one of my favorite things is about, you know, what time is appropriate to change from your nighttime pajamas to your daytime pajamas. Um, uh, we're kind of like, uh, I don't know if you've seen that, that symbol about introverts unite uh, in your home separately. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing, doing, doing here. So you're saying to yourself, okay, Paul, you're just rambling along. Well, the thing was that the thought was about being alone and um, how do you, how we, we crave um, just some, some, some interaction, you know, with, with people. I remember reading one of the, reading some uh, um, study years ago that one of the, highest 
things that when when people were, were queried about what they were afraid of, of most was that uh, a lot of people were afraid of dying alone. And I, I thought to myself, you know, well, we all actually, nobody goes through it with us. We all, we all die alone, but it just dawned on me as I was thinking about this last night that Jesus really did die alone. Um, he even said, he cried out on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And because Jesus died alone for us, totally forsaken by the world, even, you know, even one of his closest disciples uh, denied him. And we don't have to be alone even when we are alone. Um, Jesus is always with us. God is always with us. Jesus paid that price so that we can always have God with us. God will always be in our lives, even when we're feeling alone. And it's such, we don't, me personally anyway, I don't think too often about the fact of just how horrible and awful it was. But having to experience this social distancing and hanging and not getting to go anywhere or choosing not to go, go, go anywhere um, has been very sobering for me. And uh, it's just led me to think more and more about how Jesus died alone specifically just for us so that we don't have to be alone. Even at our point of death, as Christians, we know and we can rejoice in the fact that we are not going to die alone, that Jesus will, will be with us. Uh, so as we partake in uh, uh, communion this morning together, I, my prayer is that we all remember that the times that we're going through are nothing compared to what Jesus went through for us. So if everybody has their uh, um, juice and, and their bread, um, let's pray together and uh, uh, partake in that remembrance of the great sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that uh, uh, you give us life uh, and as Woody said, you give us liberty. Um, it's a, a different liberty than what the world knows, but it's a, it's, it's a freedom. It's freedom in you. It's freedom in your spirit. Um, I just thank you that your spirit is with us here this morning. Um, I pray that uh, we continue to be open to the leading and the nudging of your spirit. God, sometimes we don't know what to say. Uh, we don't know what to think. We're all confused. We're all worried uh, about what's going on. But God, this morning we pray that you help each and every one of us remember that we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be confused. That we can look to you because Jesus, you died for us so that we do not have to be alone. We thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. Thank you, Paul. That was awesome. Give everybody a chance to, uh, to go ahead and finish with your praying and meditation in this time. Okay, so now we get a chance to hear from our leader, hear from, uh, hear from our liege. Oh, so, man. <laughs> so Doug, go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, thanks, Brad. Well, as you guys can figure out, this is we're, we're a work in progress here. We're learning, and we're going to just keep getting better as we figure out how to 
do things with this technology. And uh, so I just want you to keep coming back. We have more people this week. We had last week. I just kind of did a head count. We've got over 60. Last week we had 49. And so real good stuff. Thank you for coming. And, you know, and the imperfections aren't a big deal. Um, the important thing is we can see each other's faces. Uh, there's a real connection. And uh, it's just neat to be the body of Christ in this, uh, in, in this format. So thank you for coming. And be sure to invite others. And like I say, we're going to keep getting better. We've been going through the Gospel of John, and I want to bring a teaching out of Chapter 8 that I think would be helpful in this time. Because you know, we're facing this health scare and, and then the economic crisis that's uh, going along with it. And so a lot of us, you know, are, are wondering what the future holds. There's a lot of uncertainty, uh, fear, worry, anxiety. And, uh, you know, and, and so we face this thing. And so in times like this, it's really important to have some something or rather someone we can put our trust in. And of course, we know who that person is, is Jesus. But, the, you know, Jesus is the one we can put our trust in. But why would we put our trust in Jesus? And uh, well, in John, in John chapter eight, we learn one reason is because he's God. Uh, you know, he's not just a teacher. He's not just a guy who makes promises. So, you know, he's not a motivational speaker. Jesus is God. He's God's son. And when he makes a promise, he can back it up. And uh, this kind of goes along with our mission statement. You know, our mission statement is to experience God and reflect Christ. But understand, when we experience Christ, uh, God, we experience him through Jesus. And so when we experience Jesus, we experience God. And so our mission statement could be experience Jesus experience, and reflect Christ. And uh, that's exactly what we need to do. Now, one of the most amazing claims that Jesus ever made comes to us in John chapter 8. And uh, it's in verses 56 and 59. And I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And uh, oop, here we get that going. Okay. Can all of you see that? It can thumbs up if you need. And so. We are in John chapter 8. We're going to look at verse 51 real quickly, and then verses 56 through 9. See it? Okay. And if you look at verse 51, Jesus makes this statement I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Now, that's kind of an amazing statement in and of itself, because, you know, who can, who can make that promise? And the Jewish leaders thought that too, because when they heard him say that, they, said, they basically said, Who do you think you are? You know? You know, are, are you greater than our father Abraham? And Jesus basically comes back and says, yeah, I am. I am greater than the father Abraham. And he could make that statement because he was greater than Abraham. And so, you know, when it comes to Jesus, you know, making that promise, it's really nice to know that God has our backs. Even if we were to die, you know, the greatest fear is his death. But even as Christians, we don't even have to worry about that because Jesus has got our back on this. He promises that we will live. And no matter what happens, we have life. I remember hearing a story of a little girl who was with her family and they were driving past the cemetery. And the little girl asked her parents, you know, mom and dad, where do people go after they die? And uh, she said, I, I don't want to, I just want to know, I don't want to go there. And, uh, and so I, I love that story. Because most of us, we have that assurance, but we're not in a real big hurry to get there. And so uh, Jesus gives us his promise, and it does help us, though. Uh, I doubt many of us will have to worry about death through this, this experience. But the thing is, we have that promise. But there's more to it. And, uh, you know, on Easter, it's coming up. We're going to have probably one of the best Easter services you've ever experienced. We're already planning for it. And... Uh, and it's going to be really cool because we're just going to be reintroduced to the idea that in life, in Jesus's life, and that the things we're experiencing here and now, uh, you know, they're just temporary, like was already said. And so we have this hope in Jesus. But how is it that Jesus can make this promise? Well, Jesus goes on in John chapter 8 and drops this huge bombshell. And in verse 30, 56, he says this. He goes down and he says this, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you've seen Abraham? 
I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Now, in this passage, Jesus clearly and unmistakably claims that he is God in the flesh. And so what I want to do is look at this passage and go through some observations that can, you know, assure us that Jesus is the one we can trust in, and he's the ultimate one that we can anchor our lives in, even when life is really uncertain around us. The first thing I want to point your attention to is this phrase, your father. And uh, Jesus is telling his his listeners, Abraham is your father. He's not my father. My father is God. And uh, back in verse 54 uh, of John chapter 8, Jesus says, My father in whom you claim is your God is the one who glorifies me. And so Jesus is basically saying, "Hey, hey, you guys have Abraham as your father. My father is God the father, and I am his son. And so uh, that kind of gives some, you know, background when we, we, like John 3, 16, you know, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only son, that who should ever believeth or trusteth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the first thing is Jesus claims that God's his own father, but he takes it a little farther. He goes on and says, Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Now, this is kind of an odd statement. There's two things that Jesus is implying here. And uh, Jesus is first saying that Abraham is not dead. You know, the, the, the Jews were thinking Abraham has long, died long ago, but Jesus is telling us, no, Abraham never died. He's alive now, and he's watching what's going on right now. And so that's kind of cool. It's, again, it comes back to this idea that those who believe in Jesus will never die. But there's another implication here. And the question is, how would Jesus know this about Abraham? And the thing is that in this passage, Jesus is telling us that I have, you know, he has inside information. He has uh, outside information, actually, because he actually knows what's going on in heaven. And this is what Jesus means back in verse 23 when he says, you are from below, I am from above, you are from this world, I am not of this world. And basically, uh, Jesus is telling us that, again, he's not limited by our frame of reference. We only see things temporarily. We only see what's going around us, and thus we get afraid and worried because we don't have that bigger perspective. But Jesus sees the big picture. He even knows at the moment that Abraham up in heaven has seen him. And, uh, and so, you know, we have that. Again, this is more reason we can trust in Jesus. But Jesus goes on, and he says to them, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, look at that word before. Uh, that word before, literally, you know, is he saying that I existed before Abraham? Who, that's quite a statement. And, uh, and, the, and the Jews thought it was pretty wild, too. But the point is that Jesus is not a temporary being like you and I. He's existed for a long time. In fact, it goes back to John chapter 1, where Jesus said in the beginning, or John writes, in the beginning was the word, The word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. And see, Jesus is the word. And not only has he been from the beginning, he was part of the very creation process. And uh, and he is the creator. So, again, we worry about our health. We worry about finances. We worry about our lives. But Jesus is the one who actually could bring all things into existence. He's the one that we put our trust in to get us through all things, no matter what happens. And we go a little bit further here, and this is what really is interesting. Jesus finally says, I am. And this is quite, a, you know, a statement. Now, I'm not a real grammar expert, but if you, if you read it, it doesn't sound right. He says, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was born, I am. And you look at that, and he goes, the tense is wrong. It, it seems like he should have said, before Abraham was born, I was, or I existed. But that's not what Jesus said. He says, I am. And uh, the, now that could just mean he's referring to his eternality. He just, he always is present. But those of us who know our Old Testaments knows that Jesus is making a deeper, interesting statement here when he says, I am. And uh, back in the Old Testament, we have a story where Moses is sent by God to go to the Israelites. And, uh, and Moses is like, who am I? And so he says, 
to God, who should I say, you know, is sending me? By what authority? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And what we learn is that that phrase, I am, was God's actual name in the Old Testament. And the Jewish leaders understood this. And it's very pronounced in the Greek language, because in the Greek language, you can say I am with just a little Greek word called eni. That's it. I am. But Jesus didn't say eni. He said ego eni. And ego is, our, is a word for I. And so basically saying I, I am. Very pronounced and very emphatic. And Jesus is clearly applying to himself a name to the Jewish leaders that was only given to God the Father. And, uh, and they understood this. They, they were pretty upset about this. And because of that, in verse 59, they picked up stones to stone him. And, uh, you know, this was not a misunderstanding. Uh, Jesus didn't go, hey, guys, I think you got me wrong. Jesus clearly knew that he was, you know, referring to himself as God. And uh, later on, Jesus, you know, would tell us, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you know, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And the reason he can say that is because, man, he's not just a teacher. He's not just a motivational speaker. He is God. And he's telling us today, hey, guys, no matter what's going on in your lives, even though we're isolated, even though we got stuff going on, he is trustworthy because he is the God, Lord of all creation, and we can put our trust in him. And, uh, but here's the thing. You know, this doesn't happen by accident. We have to make a decision to put our trust in God. And, uh, and for me, it's tough because as I'm going through thinking about finances, thinking about church, thinking about all the things that you know, are going to change in the weeks and the months to come, I get all these, these worries and uh, I just don't naturally feel at peace. I have to do something about that. And I have to intentionally trust in Jesus. And that, for me, that involves an act of surrender. And, uh, and I just, you know, I have to do something specific to do this. And I usually do this through what I call a surrender prayer. And what I do, and I don't know if you can see me, but I take my fist and I hold my fist out upright. And I put it like this. And in my fist is all the things that I'm holding on to. Because here's the deal. Everything I'm trying to control, I'm not turning over Jesus. And all my fear, my resentments, my shame, my guilt, all the emotional stuff that I'm getting wrapped up in, that's in my fist right now. And when I'm, you know, and, I, and take your fist and put out your hand just like I am and, and squeeze tight. And the more you try to control, the more you're trying to control that and squeeze tight. And uh, ultimately, what I have to do is say, Jesus, I need to give this to you. And that's when I do the other two things. I turn my fist over, and I simply let it go. And just the act of doing that in a prayer can help us turn over to Jesus, God, Lord, Creator, the things that are weighing on our heart today. And so as we close this message, I just want to lead you in a surrender prayer. And I pray these kinds of prayers all the time. And uh, and hopefully, you know, some of the stress you're feeling, you can turn over to him uh, at this time. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we know that uh, all of us have our different challenges during this time. We know that some of us have financial concerns. Some of us have health concerns. Some of us have family who are in danger and who are sick right now. Father, we know that our country will never be the same. We know that the recovery from this will not happen in just a week or a day or even months that we have a, a lot of things that are going to be challenges in the future. But Father, help us to remember that you are God and our future is in your hands. Help us to put our trust in you, to surrender to you and let you be in charge. And Father, as we walk in that peace, may others see the peace we have in you. And may they ask us, why, do you, why can you face this with such joy and lightheartedness? And may we be able to answer them and give them an answer that because we have Jesus and he's got us covered. So help us, Father, to turn these things over to you and experience your peace in our lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Glad you joined us. And uh, we're going to, we're not, we might try something else next week. We haven't totally uh, figured that out yet. But uh, like I say, we're getting better. Um, we're going to unmute everybody. 
and everybody can say hello and, and chat for a little bit. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, be sure to check our Facebook page, our website. We're always doing updates. Feel free to call me during the week and any of our leaders. We'd be glad to encourage you and pray with you. And if there's any needs that you are aware of that, uh, you know, that you'd like us to be aware of, don't hesitate to reach out. So you are basically all unmuted. Can we hear everybody? Not yet. There we go. Uh, Hi, everyone. Hi. How's 40 weeks looking, Erica? Good to see all of you. Hello. There's Heidi and Dan. Okay. Good to see you guys. Who's CR? Who's CR? Chris and Carlin. Oh, all right. All right, guys. <laughs> Morning. Who's Compact? You and your family have a great week. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. Hey, let me encourage you guys to all get your own Zoom account. It's free and you get 45 minute meetings. You can chat with each other. It's awesome and you learn how to do it, but it's free and it's really easy. So get your own Zoom account. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. I read today on this week that. Um, Love you, Sandy. Hi, Noah. Zoom. They're stuck. They're stuck. Okay, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, George. Hi, Kim. Hi, Sue. Asked. Now, who is Compact? Hi, Aubrey. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Erica, how are you feeling? Sue. Sue asked to say. Uh, still pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Susan and Elora. Hi, Susan. Hey, Doug, this is your father-in-law and mother-in-law, and we really loved it. Thank you so much. That was very inspiring. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Oh, it's her dad. Hi, Chris. Yeah, that's my, that's, that's my father-in-law and Lisa's dad, and so it's an honor to have him with us. A good now, hey, by the way, so Jay was part of this is our church's beginning way back when it started. And so he was one of the first preachers who was on board when this church started. Are you trying to say I'm an old guy? <laughs> no, you said it for yourself. <laughs> oh, man. I can't look at it. Hi. 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 Denise, are you still working? Yes. Yeah. Erica. Hi, yeah. Erica, will they will they let you keep going? Um, yeah, until two weeks over. Okay. So that'd be like April eighth. Okay. <laughs> hi, Aubrey. Say hi. Is, hi, Maria. <laughs> so Kim, is Jim there? Jim Tiano? Yeah, here. Is he there? Okay. Is Claire, is Claire on there too? Just wanted to know. To, to, hello, Jim. I can see you. Hi, Kim. Hi, Jim. There he is. Hello. Hi, Sandy. Uh, no. No, I think it's David and. Eating candy. It's hard to get a count because every screen has multiple people, and so we never are sure how many people are per screen. But 
We had well over 16, almost 70. Yeah. 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 The kids like it, now they can talk. <laughs> oh, you know, I forgot. I put a, I uploaded a file on this about Bible passages where Jesus is God. And you can download that if you want. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. I know I already said hi to her. I already said hi to her. But hi, Jim. Hi, Kim. Hi. I got you. Hi, Sandy. I saw you. She wants to see the dog again. <laughs> Here's the dog. Here's my doggy. He's a dog. <laughs> Pretty you soon, Lisa will be showing her kittens. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll be right here. Yeah. Stealing the show. Puppy. Oh. Hey, Lisa. Your kittens don't do that, do they? <laughs> I see a dog kissing you like that. <laughs> so, Doug, what if some of the uh, people are not unmuted on my screen? Everybody's unmuted right now. Oh, no, they're oh, not. Not on my screen. That's oh. because they muted themselves. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, you can mute yourself. And there's times I'm going to, I'll mute you all and, and prevent you from unmuting yourselves because uh, there will be some times I have to do that. But right now, it's a free-for-all. I mean, we have to give up control. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still figuring this out. And when people unmute themselves while we're trying to do music, it gets a little wonky. So. I Gene, you have ultimate control by just turning off the program. This is true. She's right outside here. Oh. Yeah, and it's like all of a sudden it was just like at that. Oh. <laughs> well, have a good week, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Miss Jean. Hi. Good to see you guys. You guys ready? Uh, uh, we'll keep you informed about the next uh, worship, and so stay tuned. And again, keep communicating with us. You guys all have a good day. Bye now. Bye. 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 Bye.